Okay, and welcome to another edition. I mean, I'm, we're getting excited here. We are doing episode after episode, um, and this is fabulous. Everybody's coming in, and we're getting a lot of information from y'all. So before we start, um, as always, my Linda has her little thing here, and she's going to tell us what we have in our mugs. Um, hopefully, it's some good stuff. Yes, as always. And actually, I think today, if I'm not mistaken, and I know we had to miss a week because of medical stuff, but I think today may be our 30th episode. Mm -hmm. I will. Ha yeah. 30. 30. Oh, my gosh. That's so freaking awesome. <laughs> Isn't it? It's crazy. I never thought we'd make it this far. This is wonderful. So tonight I'm talking about hibiscus. Ooh. Hibiscus. It's such a pretty flower. You want to wear them in your hair. Now, if you're up from the north, we call it a holly. A hollyhock, actually. Ah, uh, yeah. It's called a hollyhock up north. So it's a little bit different. When I came down here, I'm like, hibiscus, hibiscus. And I look at it and I go, oh, it's a hollyhock. <laughs> yeah. Oops. So there's actually, um, no one is quite sure where hibiscus originated. And there's eight different species of hibiscus. Wow. So that makes sense what you're saying. Yeah. So um, they're, the eight species are native to um, Meritius. I'm not, I'm sure that's an island somewhere. Madagascar, Fiji, Hawaii, and either India or China. And it says the eight original species have been um, hybridized into hundreds of other species. Um, and the first mention of hibiscus is from around 295 BC when a Chinese author mentioned growing it. Wow. Uh, yeah. And it was widely grown in China, but it didn't make it to Europe particularly early due to travel restrictions. So, so um, it was travel restrictions were placed on Europeans by China during the 1300s. So, and it lasted all the way up to 1860. Ooh, talk about yeah. sanctions. Wow. I know. I was like, mm. <laughs> um, so when you say the word hibiscus, it just sounds so. I'm going to say it. So Florida, Florida or it Hawaii, it's, it's so sunshiny. It's one of those things, you know, when you say it, you immediately, you think luau, surfing. Exactly. Beach. Exactly. So because of that restriction, the travel restriction, it's possible that European visitors never even saw hibiscus when they would go visit China. Um, so that they couldn't bring back any plants. So that was like the thought behind it. So if you don't see it, you can't take it. Exactly. Exactly. So I thought that was interesting. Um, now, before we get into the medicinal and magical benefits, I wanted to talk about some fun facts about hibiscus. So um, it is known as rose mellow, which I've never heard. Hardy hibiscus, rose of Sharon, and tropical hibiscus. I've heard of rose of Sharon, and that's pretty big down here in Florida. A lot of things are Sharon. It's not Sharon. Yeah. It's Sharon. Sharon, yes. 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 Oh, okay. Right. But um, I've heard of that one. But like up north, we call them hollyhocks. Yeah. It's so I don't weird. know how we got that name for it. It's so funny with the regions, how that is. So let's see if I can prop this up. That'll make it a little easier for me. Okay. So um, hibiscus can symbolize, um, or excuse me, hibiscus has a history of being a religious symbol, which I did not realize. Um, yes. Okay. It's the flower of the Hindu goddess Kali. Oh, I did not know that. Yep. And she's often pictured emerging from a hibiscus flower um, and it's common to use hibiscus as an offering um, during ritual or anything like that to both her and um, Lord Ganesha during worship so I thought that was really interesting that that is interesting now hollyhocks look a little bit different than hibiscus um, okay I'm gonna try and show you a picture let's see how my phone works and it's not Nope, it's not. because if Pam would get her fingers out of the way, 
Okay. Yep. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So we call that a hollyhock. And that's yep. if you type in hollyhock, but if you type in hibiscus, it looks almost the same. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a little different, but it's I, a little different, but you can tell they're related. They, yeah, definitely related. And, um, now the hibiscus can symbolize relationship status. So, um, the, the relationship status in Tahiti and Hawaii. So if worn behind the left ear of the woman, she is not available for a relationship. And of course, if she's on, if it's on the right ear, she is single and ready to mingle. <laughs> kind of like if it's a ring on your left hand, you're not available. If it's a ring here, I'm definitely available. Uh, right. Or uh, even like the claw dog ring, if you have it pointed down, it's supposed to symbolize marriage. And if you have it pointing so, outward. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I was told I wasn't married until I got my claw <laughs> Right. Exactly. Um, now this was interesting. Hibiscus juices can be used to blow bubbles and it works particularly well with, when combined with soap. So I'm going to have to test that out with the kids sometime. I was going to say, uh, I know there's a little expert at your house. that would be wonders. Yes. She loves bubbles. Absolutely. She would absolutely just master that art. Yes. Um, the yellow hibiscus is the state flower of Hawaii. Yes. And yeah. Hibiscus is also the national symbol of Haiti and the national flower of Malaysia, the Solomon Islands, and New, or New, N I U E. I was saying that's interesting. That so I didn't know it was anybody's. Now, you talk about it. When I moved to Florida, one of the first things I got was the salt life in a heart mm -hmm. with a hibiscus. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's. So that's you know, sitting on my car like back. It's like a rite of passage. It, it, um, you know, Florida, you have to do that, don't you? You have to have salt life on your vehicle and you have to have a hibiscus. Isn't that a, like a law? Except except mine, my sticker is thrift life, which we'll get into that later. Oh, we definitely will. Caesar. Um, now, you'll find this interesting. A species of hibiscus, which is hibiscus cannabinus. Ooh is often used to make paper. So what do you think that is? A hemp, the hemp plant. It's crossbred. Yep. So I thought that I did not realize that there was a species of hibiscus like that. I wonder what it smells like. Probably heaven, <laughs> if, there were, if there were one. <laughs> but No, I'm just curious how it would smell because a hibiscus has. That's really sweet. sweet. Like, like yeah. you know when you smell it it's just like oh i know i know um the inner bark of hibiscus um tilicius which is one of the species is used in polynesia to make rope and wood <clears throat> excuse me to make rope and the wood is used to make canoes so kind of going back to what we were saying with the hemp rope and the stems, how you yeah, can. Yeah, I was just going to say, I wonder if it's related some way to the hemp plant, like way back and. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, at least that one species seems to be. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because they, in natural states, they will cross pollinate sometimes and come up with something. So that's why I'm wondering. Right, right. Pretty cool. Um, and then, of course, um, hummingbirds love to feed from hibiscus flowers. So that's your hummingbirds. And then um, hibiscus is also regularly used in Ayurvedic medicine, which is in all, all the time. I mean, they call for it in a lot of different things. Um, I studied yeah. Ayurvedic for a while, and it's like everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, the and, nectar of a hibiscus is sweet. Yes. And we all know from Mary Poppins, you know, spoonful of sugar. But if you sweeten whatever you're working with, just like with honey, it gives mm -hmm. you that you'll take it and you'll use it kind of thing. Because if it doesn't yeah. taste good, you're not going to do it. I mean, let's be honest. Exactly. If, if it was true that we would do it, whether it tastes good or not, we'd all be a size five because we'd all be eating salads and granola. But there are those of us. Um, <laughs> The yeah. like burgers or whatever. When I get done with a salad, there is nothing healthy about it. Trust me, not even the lettuce. I know. 
Um, so speaking of medicine, let's get into the medicinal aspect. So hibiscus is full of antioxidants. So going back to like the blueberries and the other things, all the things, so many things that we've talked about have been antioxidants. So it's going to be good for your immune system. Um, it may also help to lower blood pressure. Hibiscus is known to help with blood okay. pressure. Um, and then it says, uh, can also help lower blood fat levels. It may help to boost your liver health when taken in small doses. Large doses may cause liver damage. Again, always do your research before doing this. These are just going over the herbs. It's still, you still have to look for contraindications, any medications you're taking on all of that fun stuff. Um, it also may help with weight loss. So, I want to look into that. <laughs> Put that um, back and we'll see how that works. <laughs> right? Exactly. Hey, vodka, zero carbs. Um, <laughs> so it says may help to fight bacteria with um, that cause infections. It can also help with fluid retention. So that would make sense with the weight loss. Yeah. So Just if you're that real quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, it can also calm an irritated stomach. It can help with uh, urinary tract infections, um, aid in digestion. And it also says it could be a remedy for dandruff and hair loss. So I thought that was interesting. Is that why they make some shampoos? I've seen shampoos out with hibiscus in it. You have all believe, the stuff. Yep. Like they have out all the stuff now with all the different oils, the shea oil, the mm -hmm. shea, and this, that, and the other. But I have seen hibiscus. Yeah, it's something when oh, when the, the oil, the flower, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, and also it says that hibiscus may also have a cooling effect on the body. So it's great when you drink it cold in like tropical climates, but you can drink like hibiscus tea either warm or cold like we've talked before. So if we put it in our vodka and we take our vodka out of the freezer, we're good to go. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And, uh, weekend. and also hibiscus is really good for like PMS, um, cramps and things like that. So I thought one of them did say it could help with um, contraception. Please don't drink hibiscus tea thinking that <laughs> it's good do the trick but um yeah, that's like the aspirin between your knees i thought that was interesting so um now hibiscus magically is typically used in love spells i was gonna wonder where it was used love spells yeah it's yeah typically now because the smell is so intoxicating and because hibiscus is an aphrodisiac ah Oh, that's why. Yeah. Oh, well, if you add it to the vodka, then you're sure to get laid. There you go. And then it says the, and of course, if you're incorporating the color, so you can do like red hibiscus, which would enhance like love spells and things like that. And we've talked about that before. Attract it what? Four or five different colors. Oh, there's a ton of the them. Orange, pink, red. I've seen mm -hmm. yellow, purple. Up yeah. north. We have a lot of purple hollyhocks. I mean, they're all over the place. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. yeah I love purple, obviously. Um, now well, you can... the color of your hair. Oh, really? Mm. Yes. I'll have to send you pictures. Um, you can also burn red hibiscus as an incense to increase passion in the room. Mm -hmm. I wonder what it smells like. I, I don't think I've ever smelled I don't think I, no, I for sure have not, not incense. So we're going to have to experiment. An incense store and, or somewhere that or has that incense or, and just, her. you know, take a sniff because I, I, I can't imagine the smell of it being burned. Oh, I know. Oh, I'm traumatized by those damn rose petals. <laughs> That's what I keep thinking about every time I'm thinking about it. Oh, I wonder if it's going to smell like the rose petals. Oh my God. It smelled like burnt hair. It was horrible. Um, you can also sleep with hibiscus next to or under your pillow to help improve your chances of prophetic dreams. Yeah. So it's also good for psychic work and divination other than just lust and love. 
um, and passion. It's also good for independence and harmony. So if you're doing any rituals or spells for anything like that, um, mm. courage, beauty. So if you're doing any of those self-love, self-care type rituals that we've talked about before, put you some put you some hibiscus in your ritual bath water. Instead you of know what? Floating a few of them in your bath water would be amazing. Yes, ma'am. I know. Ooh. Couple of candles, couple. And of guess what? The deities associated with hibiscus are Venus and Aphrodite. Thank so, you, Aphrodite. I know. Um, zodiac correspondences are Aquarius, whoop whoop, and Scorpio. Ooh, Scorpio! Really? That's where yeah. passion comes in. The gender is feminine. The crystals associated would, of course, be rose quartz. Um, you can also use orange carnelian, garnet, of course, any of those type of colors. Um, the element is water, the planet is Venus, and the gender is feminine. And the other thing was, um, let's see, yeah, inducing dreams also. And you can carry it in a sash. Uh, satchel or burn as an incense to attract love. We've already talked about that before. Be careful when you do those type of things. But I thought it was interesting. Yeah, I thought I thought that it was interesting um, as an aphrodisiac for sure. Yeah, I'm. You know, it's so sweet when you have the flower when you smell it. You know, growing is it's very very beautiful. But I just can't imagine that scent being conveyed in an incense. There are certain scents you just, yeah. I, I can't picture, like, there are scents you can, there are obvious ones like sandalwood, cedar, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can, but some of the stuff like that, I just wonder, you know, how bad it's going to smell. <laughs> you, trust me. <laughs> You're traumatized. You got to go through PTSD. We're going we're gonna to get, we're going to get some intervention here from uh, Melinda here on this wonderful, because it was like, phew. I thought you were going to die that night. <laughs> it was like so bad. But that was hibiscus. I thought that was some good stuff. You know, and I'm not being, I have seen, uh, I've been to places that have the big wide mouth, like a martini glass, and they put a mm -hmm. hibiscus flower in, yeah. floating on your drink. It's one of those, you know, foo-foo drinks. Um, and I, I wondered about, what was all tied in with that, you know, but now right. that it is edible, obviously, and it, it does yeah. do something. So I just wonder because a lot of places, I mean, of course, like I said, when you see that flower, you immediately go to the beach. That's where your brain just, yeah, your brain to the beach. And you think about it in a fruity drink, you know, wearing the lay, putting one behind your ear, the whole nine yards. Yeah. So I just couldn't imagine you know, using it any other way. Right. Now no. that you talk about it in the bath, that would be like that would... petals in your bath, you know. Yeah. Instead of the rose petals, do the hibiscus. Heck yeah. Yeah. And then go on a date night, have your big martini with your big hibiscus flower in your martini and eat oysters and call it a night. Uh, and black olives. I'm Italian. Remember black olives. Black olives. Is it, are black olives an aphrodisiac? Oh, yes, they are, honey, in Greece and Italy. Well, no wonder. I love black olives. <laughs> and she's wondering why she has so many children. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. Woo! I never yeah. knew that. I never heard yeah. that about black olives. Black ever. olives are an aphrodisiac in Italy and Greece. Yes. Wow. Um, it, it's, it's a thing. Um, especially if you take the black olives, you pull the pit out, and you stuff it with a piece of feta. Mm -hmm. And then you soak it in a garlic and olive oil. Those are my oh, favorite. Girl. Mike that. and I go to Fresh Market all the time to the olive bar and I always get I always get the olives and then I get the I get just a crap ton of roasted garlic and just oh so Oh and the feta cheese on Oh man. It. Now so I got it. Oh, now I gotta go to the olive bar tomorrow. Okay. Yes. I, that's the kind of I and this is why I'm not a size five. Right. Um, nor I. <laughs> I would never give up 
Why Although food? I don't think we would get super huge off of olives. <laughs> but the feta cheese, the out, the oil, and I, like I said, I start out healthy. You give me a plain baked potato, and by the time I'm done, I guarantee it'll give you a heart attack. Right. Not a problem. It's you know, it's going to be like a fettuccine Alfredo, heart attack on a plate. Oh gosh, that's too funny. But that was hibiscus, and so tonight. That was interesting. I I enjoyed that one. Yeah, that's me too. Tonight. So a little teaser. I told you that my sticker was thrift life. So tonight we're talking about thrifting and witching on a budget. All right, witching on a budget. Now, I'll let you in on a little secret. For two years, I worked for Suncoast Goodwill. Um, I helped run two stores. And um, let me tell you, I was always a thrifter prior to that because I had children. Let's face it, you got kids, you thrift. Um, And I was never, I mean, I would go in, especially for camp. I did Boy Scouts for um, 10 million years. And I would go there to buy camping clothes because they oh, yeah. ruined them in two seconds. Mm-hmm. And Boy Scout pants for just little guys is $35, $40 a pair. They're like, no, 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 no. We're going to the thrift store. We're going to pay $2 and you're going to get a pair of olive colored pants and you're going to yeah. be good to go. Exactly. That's what we did. And even for myself, I bought, um, cause I had to be in uniform as well. So I would buy, you know, olive colored pants at the thrift store and you can get Boy Scout stuff at the thrift store. Oh yeah. Or almost nothing. So I was a thrifter then. And as I've gotten, I don't, not older, but just a little bit wiser on things. When I worked at Goodwill and this is true story, people donate and sometimes children are donating their parents have crossed over and they're donating from their house and they don't know what they're donating. So my job, because I used to work for uh, a clothing manufacturer. So I, I know he was high end. So I know high end clothes and it was like, Oh, I could, they call it boutique. We get stuff in. We literally got a Dolce and Gabbana dress. It still had the tags on it for $645. Damn. We sold it for 50. <laughs> I know. Well, first of all, it was an ugly dress. I'm just going to tell you that. But right. it was Dolce and Gabbana. I had a Dion von Furstenberg purse come through, still had the tags on it, $475. I think the most I ever paid for anything was like a Vera Bradley bag. And I didn't even pay, like designer stuff, I didn't even pay for it because it was like, free from work through it, like work program thing. Like I just never, I just don't do the designer thing, but I am not me. a designer person. And anybody that knows me will tell you I'm not now. True story. I go and I hit Goodwill. I'll be the first cause I work there. So I know how it works. So right. I go there and you can find all the name brands. Uh, a lot of it still has tags on it. Mm -hmm. So you can see the actual price and see the goodwill price, especially if you watch your colors because they have a different color every day. Yeah, that's the fifty percent off. It's the key, right? Can I? I have have seen top dollar stuff go for almost nothing, and Mm -hmm. I am the world's worst. I went this weekend. My roommate and I. She. um, We had time on our hands so we both hit we hit goodwill we hit a couple other thrift stores too but goodwill tends to be my favorite not only because i worked at them and i know most of the people that work at all the four goodwills right. around me but it's because i know the quality of clothes that they get a lot exactly. of times so i know what stores to hit for clothes what stores to hit for knickknacks what stores to hit for furniture and it's like, okay, what are we looking for? This We're going to go to this store because this store has a better selection of this. you know. So working in Suncoast, I do know the stores. And I will tell you, um, Goodwill also gets new goods in. So let yeah. me explain how that works because a lot of people don't understand that. They buy end-of-year quantity stuff. Um, it might come from Rite Aid. It might come from another um big manufacturer who makes the stuff 
they get it at end of year when they're getting rid of it, they don't want it anymore or didn't do well in the stores or whatever, they're halving the price. So you can purchase something at Goodwill brand new and you can tell because it has the white tag on it and it ends in 99 it's whatever it is, $12.99, $3.99, whatever. And those are brand new stuff. And it has the white tag. Now, the advantage is it's exactly the same stuff that you would have bought in that other store, but right. at a third of the price. Right. Exactly. So and I actually have some actual stuff. We're going to do show and tell tonight. Yes, I have some things as well. Yeah. Everybody knows that I do virtual circle and virtual circle is ritual for a year and everybody loves my Athame. Yes. Gotten, do you know where I got that? That's a good will. What? Shut the hell up. It's a new item. Oh my gosh. Okay. Are you talking about the dragon one? Uh, uh, no. Yeah. The big dragon one. I'm going to grab it here off my altar if I don't kill myself in the process. But yes, ma'am. I bought that. That was, um, Wow. Five dollars at Goodwill. Shut. Uh, are you serious? That is like the most badass thing ever. I don't know how you look at this, you guys. Look how crazy cool that is. Now, this comes in at Halloween time. Oh, oh my gosh. Now, this is, does it still have the tag on it? Sure as hell does. <laughs> $24.99. Wow. Now, I pay, I didn't wait for it to go on sale because they put all the Halloween stuff on sale the next day because I knew it wasn't going to be there. Right. No. This is Goodwill. Yes. Okay. This is my pride and joy. Yeah. All right. Everybody, I've had more people like, oh my God, that is like, honey, it's cool. It's so badass. $25. You'd pay $25 for that, wouldn't you? I haven't even seen anything like that on freaking Amazon or anywhere like that. I looked. Okay. Now, this is what you have to do. You have to actually, when you thrift and everybody who thrifts, just like if you yard sale, you know, when seasons change and stuff comes in. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to tell you when you go to Goodwill, Halloween, let, let's face it. They start training the end of this month for Boo Crew. I was Boo Crew for three years. Okay, I'm just going to let you know that. Boo Crew is the person they bring in from each store, and you are trained. You go through a training session, don't laugh, about how to put together a Halloween costume. And not only how to put one together, but how to help people in the store for Halloween. So it's called Boo Crew. I still have a couple of my T-shirts. They're orange and they say blue, boo crew and um, black. Okay. But the day after Halloween, when everything goes on 50% you know, off, Goodwill is mobbed. Oh, yeah. Because this kind of stuff goes on sale then. I've wow. never, I will tell you, I've never seen anything like that in any of my Goodwills. Oh, my Goodwills down here have this. Let me yeah. tell you, they get a lot of, oh God, if you work for Goodwill, you cannot purchase anything unless it's been on the floor for three days and everything has a date on it, mm -hmm. except for new goods. New goods you can purchase at any time. So the hardest part of that working there was seeing all the stuff come on the floor and knowing you can't touch it. For I would days. not, that would kill me. Well, and I was the... I was the enforcer on the three days they, at the one store. They said, that's your job. And I was like, oh, I don't want that job because I can't do it. Now, another thing I got, do not laugh again, are my little skull mugs. It came no. again. I've got, I've got one. It was a new item. I did wait for it to go on sale because we had a couple of them at the store. So I got it for half price. I got four of them for half price. Right. And they're glass. They're a good heavy it's a heavy glass. It's a, a, yeah. And they're adorable. They're absolutely adorable. But I paid like maybe a dollar a glass for them. Yeah. You, I always, we always look for glassware and this was something that I recently found. And also like your little mom and pop, like thrift stores, those are really good. So I just found this and people don't realize what they're donating either. Um, 
That's what I said. A lot of kids donate their parents' stuff or a friend dies and you donate crap and you don't know what you're donating. And I'm in the back going, oh my gosh, look what we got, you know. <gasps> look at that geo. Oh, this, girl. I think, I don't know if the light catches it, but it's like a light blue. Yeah. I want to, and I need Miranda, but I want to say it's like blue lace agate maybe. I'm not Probably, sure. Yeah, that's what but it looks this, like. This was $2. $2. $2. $2. Yep. It's a, like a big, I mean, it's like this, it's the size. Of my you know how much you pay for those if you go to a stone or a crystal store? And it's, I'm sure it was like a paperweight or something, but you, you can use this, people. And I've shown this before, one of my, and it doesn't, my pride in, one of my pride and joys. I know, I love that. The witch profile, and then it's got the wicked witch and the flying monkeys. A dollar ninety nine, people. A dollar ninety nine. And. Yeah. Halloween is coming up. Mm -hmm. This is a time you need to start looking. Yes. And also things that you may not think about uh, books. I found this at a Goodwill. Tarot. Uh, spins. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 10 cents. I know. You it's guys classic, don't. Know. But it, it's a fun. It's still. Now, and then I found this one, Nordic Gods and Heroes. Oh, nice. And it's a little beat up, but I mean, you find little gem. And I found the Witch's Hammer in a thrift store for a dollar. The Malleus Maleficarum, a dollar. Yep. $2.98. Yes. And it's a mortar and pestle. And it's small. I, I mean, I like the big ones. But the small ones are so much easier to work with. I do like the small ones. Now, I tell people, okay, some people like to use silver and mm -hmm. silver castware. I don't because I don't like cleaning it because I'm lazy. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> this, it came like this. It still has the tag on it, and I'm going to see if I can get it. It's $1.98. Wow. Wow. And I'm going to pull it out of the cover. I, I've had it in the cover since I've had it. I have friends. Don't mind my friends in the background. Oh, That's they're just adding to the joy. But something like this, if you really want your altar to look, you know, if you have it for a special occasion for two bucks. Yeah, for sure. And another thing, when we, so we're talking about not just thrifting, but witching on a budget. Go to your dollar stores, people. Oh, you want to talk gosh. about seasonal stuff. I mean, you can get decorations for your altars. They, you can get stuff for Ostera when Easter's comes around. Like you were saying, Halloween's coming up. Get your stuff. Like, oh, yeah. You know, At the dollar stores where I get all like the, the um, all of these are from the dollar store. They're just black roses. Yeah. She's trying to help you. Yeah. Like so, I said, people don't know what they're giving away. This geez. is actually a Harry Potter wand. I know. Isn't I that got for two bucks. Now, if you're into candle holders, and I say that because we're witches, and of course we have four million candles just because we do. Yes. Uh, pop something here and something's going to happen and it's going to scare me. Um, <laughs> Oh my gosh, this thing's covered in wax. I, I use them a lot. Yeah. These little, like different kinds, especially if you want a god and goddess or if you're doing um, special spell work and you have a special candle that you want to use, the little candle holders there, you cannot beat the price yes. for them. And I'm so mad. I found one at a thrift store. It, it was for the chime candles, but it was like this elaborate kind of chandelier and it, it's like six of them, but it's... Oh, and I got it for like four bucks, but it's heavy. All right. You guys see my cats fighting. They always yeah. do. You something. remember I gifted um, for the last illustration for the silent auction. I found yes. another one. Oh my gosh. That is. Well, anybody who does Aphrodite. Now, Aphrodite is my goddess. So I'm just yes. let you know that ahead of time. Um, 
it is filthy because I, as you can see, it's got all kinds of stuff. And I use it. So it's, right. it's because it's used. But when you clean these up, I, uh, I sent Mike Neal actually one of these and two, um, what do you want to call these steins or goblets? Yeah. Um, I call them chalices and they sold them at the silent auction. Now he mm -hmm. got a really good price for it. This one cost me $3, 298. Yeah. I was heartbroken. Um, it needs to be cleaned up. We know yeah. that, but for, if you're doing now, if you have a group and you meet, just imagine this with God and goddess candles on it. I know. And I would put offerings in here. Yes. So, I mean, I've if, never seen stuff like that here. If you have a big altar or you're doing a big gathering, like at illustration or something, this is something that you want. This is, and okay, you pay $3 for it. Even if you stuff it in a drawer and use it once a year, it's only $3. Now, we witches love our boxes and we love to keep stuff in storage. These are actually ceramic. I paid five dollars for it. It was four ninety eight. I have four of these. Those uh, are cute. They're all different. They're all painted up. Um, this was I got this one, and I have a couple others. But the drawers are ceramic, hundred percent ceramic. So no matter what you put in them, if it goes bad or spoils or whatever, you can actually wash them. That's awesome. And, and that's yeah, awesome. and you can use stuff like that for little crystals. You can have, if you have those little mini cork bottles, you can have little things, thimbles of like herbs. And these all. are great for your herbs if you have, um, yeah. because you actually have room here to put a little sticker about what herb it is. Now, I have yeah. a different set that I use for my herbs. I haven't used this one yet, um, but I the other three I have are full of crap. Because I just, yeah. you know, you put stuff in them and, and it's easier to keep right. it. But yeah. little stuff like this, you just have to look. And while we're talking about on a budget, I just love when I get the witches who just start and they come in and they have the $400 wand and it's like, oh, yeah. this is my Harry Potter and I only paid $2 for it. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, come on. But, right. You don't, and that's the first thing, I, when I have my students, and I'm a mentor for quite a number of years, uh, the first thing I tell them to do, if you buy anything and you haven't paid half price for it, I won't talk to you. Right. Go to the thrift store, even if you get something like this, or the dollar store. Dollar store, because you can, um, Goodwill, their lowest price is $1.18. Yeah. So for 18 cents less, and we're talking 18 cents here, you can go to the dollar store and get brand new right when i taught classes i would have uh, everybody go to the dollar store or to a thrift store and find the most unique goblet they could find mm -hmm. acid etched them because you can buy acid etch at michael's joann's any of the stores you can buy it online you can put your designs and you can get witchy designs through mm. um you pull it off and you put it on and then you put the acid on it. You let it sit. Then you pull it off and wash it and it acid etches it. And then you could actually color it. That is cool. And I used to do classes. I used to do acid etching classes. And that was part of my class for, you know, you learn to make your own um, chalice, however you wanted to make it. I mean, you know, we did, we did glass and we did wand making. Um, we made a best, um, so we made a lot of our ritual tools. I do not make knives because it's a pain in the rear. But no. yeah, your knives and your bowl, your <laughs> affamés and your bowling, just buy. Yes. But to your point, for the Dollar Tree, um, just or Dollar Store, excuse me, Dollar Tree. Either one. They're, they're well, they they just closed down our do Dollar General, and they're um, bringing in a Dollar Tree <laughs> to replace. Oh, okay. It. Well, all right. You can. Survive. So I'm like. Oh, I'm excited. I like Dollar Tree better. Um, so some ideas, if you're, if you don't go a lot, some of the, some ideas are, as you said, there's a ton of candles at the dollar store, candle holders. Um, you have, a, now you have where they're selling the, um, the incense oils and the incense. 
and they also have bags of the stones that you can actually make um, your own runes with. That's where yes. I come up for. You can make your own runes with it. Absolutely. I've done that before. And also um, you can do, um, and they have like the little glass beads you can even oh. do like the, the runes with. Um, so there's a lot of different things. So they have um, also, we already talked about seasonal item matches and lighters. Um, the biggest thing is you have to go into the stores. You, yes. And I know with COVID around, people are still a little iffy. But if you get a chance, go into the Dollar Tree dollar store, um, whatever they're called in your neighborhood, every right. single dollar. My problem is I never walk out for under... 15 or $20. Yeah. Um, but I go in for the seasonal items and you're right. Um, I bought little eggs for a star and I still have them. I got, oh, I always do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, them. all the stuff that you do. Like Yule, that's the only place I buy my wrapping paper from. Right. It, and you just it, get a ton of rules. The neat thing too, is if you walk through it and you're in your witchy mind, like mm -hmm. you got it, it's like a little, switch that's the, that. and that's why i wanted to bring these up in case you don't realize all the things you can get and also they have those mirrors and sometimes they're the mirrors with the candle holders so you can do scrying i i just did um a scrying mirror i bought the frame at the dollar store i got two for a dollar because they were small sometimes right. you get the smaller ones for two for a buck and they're like and they're considered candle holders right and you they're a little that. small yep I they're little on small. that thing and girl i got a scry mirror i actually bought a frame it was a, a glass frame and i painted the back put it together i have a scrying and you have to flip your witchy switch on when you go in there you have to be in that mind frame because then you start seeing all this stuff for your altar and you're like, ooh, and I didn't realize ooh, that. Yeah, I can use that. And especially if you have children, and been there, done that, and I know you've got them. <laughs> if you buy something at the dollar store and it gets broke, you're not heartbroken over it. Right. I you're not really like, care. It's a dollar. You know, my little glass, my little plastic glass got crushed. I'd be crushed. No, it's a buck. Yes. It's a fun Thing. it is it is and also aside from shopping there's things that you can use that are free that you can add to your altar that a lot of people don't think about because especially we've talked about before with the trendy you know witch talk and all these other things that are coming out and all these brands coming out with makeup lines and everything now we've talked about before you can go for a walk and pick up rocks on your on your way on your you know on your trail um you can also do you know use wildflowers on your altar like you don't have to go buy flowers necessarily your lawn can be a limb from a fallen tree and always ask the tree's permission to take mm -hmm. that limb but there you go you've got your wand elderberry and wand your finger your <laughs> like, finger's a great one but yeah there's so much that you can get at the dollar stores and inexpensively um when i was first starting out that many years ago mm -hmm. um you didn't have that, you know, and you had to buy, you felt like you had to buy because it was hard to find anything with a pentacle on it or a pentagram. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because 50 years ago, it just didn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, they're even doing witchy stuff year round in the dollar store. Oh, yeah. And don't think you have to buy it. If you go in and see it, you go, oh, I got that stuff at home. Man, I could put that together in 30 minutes. That's another reason I like to shop different stores during the holidays just to go in and see what and they apparently, have. another store that's getting really witchy i've heard and i still have yet to go in it is five below yes, which is really. yeah and they've had they have like all sorts of moon stuff and all sorts of moon stuff star stuff chakra stuff yeah like incense all sorts of stuff. Uh, I need michael's joanne's um 
I don't shop Hobby Lobby, so I really couldn't tell you, but I do do Michael's, Joanne's, AC Moore, which is not around anymore. That used to be big in Baltimore. But a lot of that stuff, you go in and you look at it, and it's like, oh, I got all that stuff at home. I can do that. So yeah. it's not necessarily going in to buy. Mm -hmm. You go in and you see what's trending, what's going on. Seriously, you walk into Joanne Fabrics, and their stuff is, is expensive. I'm not going to lie to you. But I see some of this stuff, and I'm like, well, hang it i can take a piece of galvanized bucket and make that myself and i've done it so yeah. always keep that in mind that and it doesn't have to be a single purpose item and you can repurpose anything yeah and also you can find a lot of herbs you know you don't have to go buy bulk herbs you can find a lot of herbs in your backyard like you can use acorns you can use dandelions, you know, you can just make sure, you know, because of pesticides and things like that. Yeah, but the dollar stores now are, have seeds in them. You can actually buy. Um, I bought a whole gardening thing for my kids from the Dollar Tree, like a yeah. whole thing. They had the they had the clay pots. They had the seeds. They even had a little a little set that had like a little rake and like a little hoe and a little sprinkler can it, like it's ridiculous and also you can use feathers like we have ducks and geese you can find feathers all you know the ground. you don't have to go buy a fancy feather that's a pretty iridescent color you know what i mean now, if you're into and we just had to do this for our uh the shaman class i'm taking we had to make a, um a dream catcher Oh, cool. Four million dream catchers. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, you can go to the dollar store to buy your stuff for your dream catcher. They actually have the kits. Yeah, they um, do. So I, I really push, when I first started, when I started teaching um, in the Corellian tradition about 15, 20 years ago, um, I had a student who had more money than brains and would go out and I mean, this guy paid two hundred dollars for a wand. I was like, oh. I, I mean, like I said, to, not judging to each his own, but it's totally not necessary. Well, it's totally not necessary. And then, of course, here is me. And my father used to say, as a child, I could make a nickel cry. I would make a Scotsman a good wife because I could make a nickel cry. That's awesome. Um, but it's okay. I teach on a budget because right. that's what most people are on. The reality is if you had that much money, you wouldn't have to worry. But for the exactly. rest of us, I mean, there for a while, 50 bucks out of my budget was like mm, crunch time. I know. And you've got to, and the other thing is really important for people is when you do your crafting and all that stuff and you get your holidays, if you buy little tubs to put the holiday for your mm -hmm. altar, Halloween. And it helps you keep things so much more organized. Absolutely. Not only organized, it keeps them safe and keeps them from getting all messed up. So you only buy them one time. And also thing I wanted to, another thing I wanted to point out. So we're talking about, let's just go back a minute to the beginner, you know, that might be new to the path or interested, you know, you can, you also need to think about, you can use a white candle and substitute that for any candle. Perfect. And we've, talked, yeah, we've talked about that before. You can use a clear quartz, same thing. Um, it's all about the intention and how you program it. So I wanted to go over some substitutes really quick because the white candle we've talked about the clear quartz, Rosemary can also be substituted for any herb that you're using in a spell. You can grow it out in your yard and it'll grow like crazy. Yes. And we talked about that one. That was our herb of the week last week. Rose can be substituted for any flower. Um, olive oil can be substituted for any oil. So if you want to like dress your candles and let's just say you want to get into into that ritual or learning you can use rosemary and olive oil you know what i mean and still set you uh, with a white candle and still set your intention a little vinegar to that and you've got a great dip 
<laughs> there you go. There you go. And also common sage can be used for any incense. So there's some there's some basics that you can kind of use starting out. Okay. If you go in your kitchen, I just taught a class on this for DJ for um, his group. Uh, last minute, he asked me if I could, someone couldn't make it. Could I teach uh, a protection herb class? And I was like, sure. And the four herbs I used was rose, rosemary, cinnamon, and mugwort. Three of those I have sitting in my cabinet that I cook with. Hello. Yes. If you're cooking with bay leaves, you can use it in a spell. It's sitting in your kitchen. And you segued, segued perfectly into the next thing that I found that I wanted to talk about. Oh. Grocery store magic. Oh, yes. So you don't even realize, so not just herbs, but like your vegetables and things like that. So I wanted to touch on a few things because I thought this was too cool to not share. Um, so lemons, limes, and oranges can be used in candle magic in many different ways, You, including filling them with oil. And I think a lot of us have seen that like on the Pinterest, the craft. Yeah, when you take the... And, and making them into candles. Yeah. You can also stick a taper or a bell candle into a lemon or a lime and load it with herbs. Um, and oils and burn the candle this way so that the wax is going on. Um, that's another way. You can also squeeze the juice out of lemons and limes and use in your cleansing baths or your floor washes or your door wash and, you know, set the intention like we talked about before what good things the lemon would be good for. But potatoes and onions is the next thing. So potatoes can be loaded with herbs and buried or thrown into a river to rid yourself of enemies and negative energies. Um, same with onions. And you can also cut an onion in half and put it in a uh, brown paper bag and put it under your kitchen sink to absorb negative energies. So I thought that was interesting. Um, and you can also place it under a, a bed to soak up an illness is what it's apples cut them in half long ways open it up you get this pentagram when you do that apple and bay leaf are great for protection you can run around your yard with it yes. and put um when we did the illustration back in 2006 i actually went the perimeter of the camp with bay leaves and apples mm. to protect the yeah. perimeter of the camp absolutely and apples you can buy for what? Nothing. The right. other thing is you're cooking in your kitchen. You have all of your herbs. After a year, they're kind of not so good for cooking, but they're good for three years for magic. Others. Just exactly. move it from your kitchen to your magic shelf. Yep. And there's also, so speaking of that, your um, you can get the fresh herbs from your produce section. They'll have them anywhere, or oh, you can yeah. do the dry but garlic, ginger and garlic are effective in magic and medicinal teas. We talked about that. Now you talked about vinegar a minute ago, so I wanted to talk about that. So with the cooking oils, um, you can actually use that as a witchcraft ingredient. Like we talked about the olive oil you can use to dress the candles, your altar tools. Um, coconut oil is good also for literally everything. 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 Um, vinegar, so apple cider vinegar is one of the really good ones to use. Um, it's also a folk remedy staple, which you probably know. <laughs> for everything. Um, it's great for, yeah, great for warding off coals, stimulating hair growth, um, cleansing negative energy. And it's, apple cider vinegar is so, so cheap for a huge bottle. Well, if you live where there's uh, iron water, I grew up with iron water, and the only way to get the soap out of your hair was to rinse it with vinegar. Oh, yeah, yeah. I grew up rinsing my hair with vinegar. Yep, and then there's wine, of course, and you can use that as an offering to the gods, which a lot of us do in ritual. Um, now, there's also the baking and spices. So for sugar, that also has another long history in folk magic used to sweeten 
one's favor or a tough situation that someone's going through. Sweet. And a love too. Um, you can use yes. love magic a lot. And yeah. They're good for topics. Yes. And you can also add rose petals or other um, herbs to the sugar. And you can use it for baking and also teas. Um, and you can sprinkle around candles to sweeten this, the spell as well. Um, and of course, sugar is dumb cheap. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you can't go wrong with sugar. Right. Um, there was another, a couple few I wanted to go over. Oh, pie tins. So if you don't, I mean, we talked about the Dollar Tree, but you can also use pie tins as a candle holder. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And they're recyclable. What I um, tell people, if you're going to do a spell and leave a candle burn for a period mm -hmm. of time, get a, go to the dollar store. You can get like two, two buckets for a dollar. They're metal, metal, get the metal ones, mm -hmm. sand out in your yard or dirt, put your candle in it. It'll burn all the way down. Now people do it in water, but sometimes the water can slosh and can spill. Yes. That, that little can that you, they're two for a buck. Um, mm -hmm. And if you wait for the holidays, they have them in every holiday. They have Easter ones. They have Christmas ones, right. um, Valentine's ones. So you can buy them or you can buy the plain ones, put dirt or sand in them, put the candle in it. It can burn all the chime candles, the little ones. The little or ones. birthday candles. If you want to use birthday candles, birthday. Or chime candles. That's a That's big thing. I was going to say, you can always use birthday candles as well. Oh. And they even have them in the different colors if you want to have it, the colors yeah, to match your colors. Yep. But make sure you put them in that and they're not going to shift. They're not going to do anything. You put them in the middle of like a table or something and it'll burn all the way down. And I can almost guarantee you're not going to have a problem that way. It's exactly. so much safer than just a candle and a holder. Exactly. It's exactly. Now your chime candles, this is, this is what gets me. If you go to party city mm -hmm. or order them online, like I do at party city, you can get 20 for like eight bucks. Oh, dang. Now, if you go into a new age store and yeah, you can pay up to 25 cents for a candle. Oh, I know. Yeah. It's crazy. so I go and I buy 20 chime candles for like eight bucks. That's a, yeah. And I have my little stash because since I do it online, I mean, I, I do a lot of candle work. So yeah, I mean, I make a lot of my own candles, but I buy the little ch chime candles because I can't make them cheaper. Yeah. And yeah, also, yeah, and there's so many things um, that you can do and you just have to look for it. If you... If you go on, um, and like you said, rainwater, you could use rainwater. For rainwater so is things. very special to use for magic. Um, and also the different types of rainwater. Like there's a different energy in just a rain and a thunderstorm. Oh, we've had some and, good things move through here lately. So uh, it's very and then different. You just charge it. You put it on your windowsill during a full moon. You let it charge and you've got your blessed water to use for anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, people have to stop. I really emphasize using stuff that you already have at home because yes. it's already got your energy in it. I mean, like the, um, anything you have, the silly cup that I bought, I mean, okay, I paid whatever for it. I've used I it have one like that. <laughs> two years. I've used this thing and I love it. It's fun. It's, it's creepy. Um, I put wine in it. I'll put soda in it just because it's cool. Um, yeah. But I've had it for that long. So it's got all my energy in it. Right. So it's and already. Also, if you're wanting herbs, let's just say you want chamomile or, or something like that. Um, go to your tea aisle. You can cut open those tea bags. I mean, depending on how much you need. You usually don't need that much, but if you're really, I mean, that could last you a long time right there. But a lot of times too, you can go to the stores and you can get the herbs either fresh or dried for almost nothing. Right. Yeah, mean, yeah. It's a couple bucks and you're going like, I have a problem 
okay, it's just like 50 years ago, you couldn't find anything witchy. You really could. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was okay, yeah. damn difficult. Yeah. Now it's like everybody's trying to make a buck off of it. Right. Yeah. And it's almost like if you have, and I joke about this, if you are into airplanes or into boats, if they put arrow or marine in front of those this is an earring, and if I put marine in front of it, I can jack the price at least double. Right, right. So a lot of that, now they're putting witch in front of it, or new age, or whatever, and they're charging you twice the price. I mean, 25 cents for a chime candle, really? Yeah, I mean, and the thing is, is like, just do your research because there are unfortunately people out there that's going to take advantage, especially, especially um, with the rise in popularity of everything. And you have to be careful even with like tarot readings and things like that. There's oh, so many scams out there, you know, but just... And, and that's another thing. Don't be in a rush to get like a tarot deck, you know, see if that's even the divination for you. It may not be, you may be way more into runes or tea leaf readings or pendulum mystery or whatever. I mean, the big thing is, yeah, head bumps. That's, a, uh, that's one on me. <laughs> I never got through that class, but the whole thing is 90% of your tools should be made by you. Mm -hmm. because you're putting your energy into it. Now, if somebody manufactures, now these are hard to make, let's be honest. So I bought right. it, but I put my energy into it. But when you make your own stuff um, or you buy something that you create for that, you know, I bought this cup to use for a Samhain ritual. Yeah. Okay. Because we're talking about our ancestors. This is the ancestor. So I bought it. Okay. I paid 50 cents for it. Mm -hmm. um, but I've used it several, several times in different rituals and, and at different gatherings and, and groups. Right. So it's got all of my energy and it's got me in it. Mm -hmm. So don't be so, I mean, if you get a good deal, like my knife, like my Azame here, if you get a good deal, get it. I'm not going to say not to. But don't run out and think that you have to buy an altar and you have to fill it no. with all of these wonderful, beautiful things. Mm -hmm. The neatest altars I've ever seen were ones that people have hand done. And it's yep. just so beautiful because. Well, even like during the fall, if, if oh, me yeah. and the kids see like, uh, well, in, in Florida, we don't get the colors down here. Yeah, we don't. We'll, we'll get lucky if, you know, there are certain trees that the colors, you know, will change, but nothing like, a, you know, New Hampshire, or Vermont or anything like that. But um, so every now and then when we see like that really bright colored red leaf or orange leaf, you know, we, we'll collect those for, you know, Mabin or, you know, for the oh, altar. Samhain, that's beautiful for Samhain. Yeah, for Samhain as well. Yeah. And so there's so many different things you could do that you don't, you, you don't have to overthink it so much. You do not have to overthink and it. And don't go out and feel like you have to buy. Right. Um, crafting yeah. your own stuff, um, makes you in charge of it. Mm -hmm. so, it's, so it's your idea. idea. Right. What and there's been a want. few things that I've crafted, but, and, and of course not everyone is crafty, but so by no means are we saying if you buy instead of create, it doesn't make it any less powerful, but, um, it is important to get your energy on things, cleanse and set your intention, but it can be so easy. And also there's a book out that I really enjoy by Deborah Blake and you can find it online. And I believe it's called witchcraft on a shoestring. Yes. And yeah, I wanted to grab it cause I have it in my bookshelf, but I forgot to grab it. Um, and as you can see, I'm in my living room tonight. <laughs> um, the one so, thing you know about books, I'm going to tell you now, you can spend a on fortune on books. Mm -hmm. Let me impart a little wisdom to you. There are places that sell used books, abookstores.com. Yes. 
abooks.com. Okay. You can get That's what I said online. <laughs> and that, as- they, that is my favorite bookstore. That yeah. really is. Um, I have a lot of books, but every once in a while I'll lend one or two out. They never quite make it back. So I have to replace. Yeah. Um, and when I do the replace, I will usually go to a bookstore because I can get a decent price for replacement because I've already spent it. Um, I find that I am a, I am one of those people that collects books. I really love my books. I love yeah, to, be able to pick up a book, smell it. You know, I'm one of those people. Yeah, me too. So <laughs> my books, everybody's like, you've got so many, you know, how do you afford it? I afford it by ordering at Abe's or I go to the local um, right. bookstores that have used books. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the thrift stores are carrying used books. You can get them really cheap there. Um, there are other ways in Baltimore, not so much here. Baltimore is a huge pagan community. As people leave the traditions, and people do, they they grow yeah. and they're like, okay, this is not for me anymore. They would, I would get phone calls from people I didn't even know, of course, because my name was everywhere. Um, right. And they would drop off witchy supplies at like, you know, I'm just not into it anymore here and give me a box of goodies. And I go, oh, uh, you know, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I run like hell with them. Um, and this is the book. Um, and it's really a good book. It really, really is because this book also has recipes in it. It has crafts. It has different things. It it's not only giving you ideas of what you can get for tools, but it actually shows you how you can do actual spells. It has actual spells, actual rituals, and things you can do for nothing. Penny on a dollar. Yeah, I really recommend that book. I really do. Especially if you're just starting out. Please don't go out and spend $400 on your witch area, you know. And like I said, uh, uh, for me, we don't all fit in a box. I mean, a lot of us are on this path because we don't fit in a box. But if if we're even if we're all pagan, we're still not in a box because what may be right for you is not going to be the same as me. And especially when you're starting out, you may not always know what's going to speak to you. So right. if you're and going and buying a bunch of money, oh yeah. If you're Forget. going eclectic, are you going Celtic? Are you going Egyptian? Or maybe you're going Norse. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Okay. So before you make those dead decisions, practice. Yeah. See what calls to you. Now as far as altars go, I'm going to tell you, people have spent fortunes on altars. I my know. altar that I've had for 20 years is actually holding my light. Hold yes. My light. It is an old piece of wood that I put. I actually screwed legs into it and I drew a big pentacle on it. That's yeah. And that's yeah. all it takes. Can you even see it? If I no. no so much crap on it. I, I put everything on it. The actual altar I have now is an old secretary that I paid $25 for. Everybody loves it. You saw how ugly it was when I got it. It was brown with pink flowers. Oh, it was hideous. Uh, it is now silver and purple and black. Yes. And I paid $35 $25 for it. Sorry. I paid $25. It has three drawers and a secretary opens down, right? Like a, di- if like a, you ever come on to, I'm going to see if I can tip this down a little bit. Yeah. This yeah. is my altar here. If you're on virtual circle, the altar you see on virtual circle is my altar. Um, I paid $25 for it. Not painted it. It sits it closes up. I have all my crap in it because you're going to start, believe it or not, you're going to start picking up a lot of stuff. Yeah. Dollar here, 50 cent here. You're going to, before you get to where you're comfortable with what you have, you're going to buy stuff and not use it. My recommendation is if you don't use it, have a little box, put it in the box, either redonate it or donate it to somebody who's also learning. Yeah, exactly. There's exactly. nothing wrong with bringing your extra witchy stuff 
skin. Or if you're Corellian, you get a hold of Mike Neal because he does the silent auctions. And you might think, oh, no one's going to pay for this. Somebody's going to see that. I mean, I, I, we freely give to Mike because yeah. you'll see something on there. And goodness knows I've spent enough money on the auctions. But you're going to see something on there that's going to appeal to you. But if you do your little box, then you can go to your local Wiccan group or pagan group and say, I started maybe Egyptian. And so I have all this Egyptian stuff. Would somebody like it? And yeah. somebody will go head over heels and, you know, you will be their savior because they can't afford to go out and buy this stuff. Yeah. So whatever you don't use you don't necessarily have to throw it away, put it in a little box. I used to get the boxes all the time. Um, I'm Corellian, but I, they would call me from all over and say, hey, I have this box of stuff, and they would drop it by my house, so we would network. I'd be on the phone. I got a whole box of Egypt, Egyptian stuff one time. So yes. my friend Isis, um, I was on the phone with her. I said, look, uh, uh, the next meetup, we were meeting in a couple of weeks. I said, look, next meetup, I have this box full of Egyptian stuff. I'm going to give it to you. You know Egyptians. You can disperse it. So I right. walked into the meeting. I handed it to her, and she was like, oh, somebody was just asking me for if I knew where I could get an ISIS. Uh, no, it wasn't a ta. Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay. She said, this is perfect. And so when you gift it, you're yeah. gifting that extra magic with it that you um, get into it. So it, it makes it that much more special, but please don't feel like you got to go out and spend $400 at, I don't know, somebody's store online because they're, they're no. wicked. Uh, no, no, no. no, I, I avoid that like the plague. I mean, I have been on some of those sites and I've had my sticker shock, you know, um, Shit. Yeah, I'm like, excuse me. And then I head right down to the thrift store and I'm I'm good. Um, it's a dose of reality. And yep. I can tell you after 50 years in this game, nothing comes across. People come in and they're like, even my altar that I do the show with is yeah. put together yeah. altar. It is not anything super special or anything. It's just... My my altar is something that I've, um, is a changing table it was after Fiona had already gotten out of that stage. And so I had already gotten rid of all that type of stuff. But on Swift Swap, there was a changing table and it was 20 bucks. And it was, it's wooden and it has the flat surface because, you know, you have the little pillow that you put the baby on. So all of that is flat. And then it has two or three shelves on the side Oh, so that, all your stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then all I do is I have like a little tapestry um, and I like have it hanging down. So it kind of covers because there's no drawers. It's just shelves. But oh, yeah. And I have it's like this big flat surface for wow. all of it. And it's portable. I mean, if you in the sense of if you move. Now, one last thing I wanted to touch on before we wrap up. Um you can also do the travel altars or the mini altars if you don't have space. If you do not have space, um, because a lot of people don't, you can get, you know, even the little Altoid tins I've seen with a book of matches and a little, candles. yeah, and little in the birthday candles and, you know, like a little, I had like little baggies with salt in it. It had, you know, different things like that and a little seashell to represent, you know, different things to represent the elements and things like that. It's not as hard as you think. Um, but even something like that, even start about if you can't have an altar in your house, you can still have an altar on a bookshelf. Mm -hmm. You can just put things on different shelves. Before I got the changing table, out. before I got the changing table, the bookshelf you always see behind me was my altar because I did, I, I did not have room for that. Plus where I did have room in our old house, it was like in the living area and it's like, eh, I don't want to have like an altar as soon as you walk in the front door. Right. And for people who are not out, so to speak, 
if you take and I've seen and done it a lot of nice different ways, just mm. your a bookshelf and just adjust everything, you know, east, north, mm -hmm. west, south, and put it all on different shelves and it, it just looks like an eclectic collection of things that you have on a shelf. Mm -hmm. And nobody's the wiser if you are in that position where you can't right. do that. Just remember it's your altar is a reflection of you. Yeah, exactly. And so don't I fell into the secretary because I was looking for something to put all my crap in because I had a, a beautiful altar at one time, but it was a glass table, a mirror table, and it broke yeah. moving down here. Oh so my God. I was without an altar and I was like, oh my gosh, I got to do something. And yeah. my little altar is only about yay high. That was, that is part of my altar to go. It's the yeah. table and I have a little bag. Uh, a little overnight, like a coach bag that I put all this stuff in and I zip it up and I take that and the two pieces go and it's, yeah. this has traveled with me all over the country. And also in the little Altoid tin, it was like a little stick of Palo Santo. So you can do it for smudging. I mean, there's so many different there's things. So many, you don't have to go out and do that huge, you know, out there, but I know. I really, I fell into this one. And when I, they asked me to do virtual circle, I had already had this and painted it. And I was like, well, I, I, remember, can... I remember when you painted it. Cause I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so freaking jealous. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> and it, it was, it was in ugh, shape. Oh, yeah. I know. I, I have the pictures before and after, but you don't have to go that far. You can, and if you're going to do something like that, you look on the local paper who's getting rid of those things because they're hideous. Right. And, and nobody likes them anymore. So this woman was just trying to unload and she's like, you really want to pay that much more? Uh, I was ecstatic because it's sturdy. It's wood. It's very right. sturdy made. But I was like, oh, wait till I get it home. So I actually did. Um, after I painted it, I did send her a picture of it because I was trying to explain to her, well, I'm going to use yeah. it for something. You yeah. You don't want to come out and say you're a witch, but right. when I sent it to her and she, she, you know, answered me back, she says, Oh, that makes the most beautiful altar. And I was like, bingo. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I didn't know she was paying it. She's probably mad now that she sold it to me because she yeah. done the same thing, <laughs> but don't go out and spend a whole lot dollar store. Yeah, I have a beautiful bouquet of black roses. Okay, mm -hmm. dollar store. All right, I bought them. I don't know how many years ago. Um, wrapped them with the silver thing, put them on there, and that's been on the wall forever. So, yeah. kind of look at what you have around your house already. Like I said, herbs. And even Here's like the cool. even like decorations, like the Black Hat Society behind you. They have stuff like that at the Dollar Tree at Halloween time. They have all sorts of stuff like that. I, cents. Yeah, I get all that stuff. Yard sale. Yes. Uh, yard sale. Um, most of my uh, this is terrible. Most of my stuff is actually yard sale stuff because that's and that's perfect. I know. Um, but these kind of little things. The other the other catches right after the holiday everything goes on sale 50 percent off valentine's mother's day father's day all of the holidays have that sale right halloween is the same way now you want a black robe or you want a robe check with some of the thrift stores because they do get material in and they sell it really super cheap if nothing else joanne sells their stuff the holiday halloween stuff and so does walmart at 50% mm -hmm. off November 1st. So you can yeah. start saving your money now. It right. takes about 10 yards to make a good robe. That's with big sleeves and full. I mean, if you're a big girl like me, you, you need right. something big. It's about 10 yards. So now is the time to start putting a couple bucks away here and there. Because when this stuff goes on sale, mm -hmm. you can get it. Down yeah. here, it's so hot. Um, I like the shears. But, yeah. you know, you can do whatever, but just wait till after the holiday. After Halloween is when I load up on the black candles. I load up on yeah. um, 
because uh, they'll have the black, they'll have the orange. Sometimes you can get the purple ones. Mm -hmm. Then Christmas. Yeah, there's a ton. Absolutely. And at Christmas is where you get your silver and gold candles for almost nothing at the dollar store because they put them on 50% sale. Mm -hmm. So that's when you pick those puppies up. And your red and your gold green. gold are more <laughs> expensive. Yeah, and your red and your green and your whites because they those are all Christmas colors. So mm -hmm. if you wait till after the holiday and you start loading up, then when you go to the holiday the next year, you've got everything and you're not, it's not that high initial outlay. Cause if you were to go to the store and buy it, it's at least twice as much. Yeah, exactly. It, yeah. And like we said, I mean, we've said it several times tonight, you don't have to buy high. You just get, do what you can garage thrift yard sales, all of that. Get um, it another witch. Because a lot of times you can buy stuff, if you buy the chime candles, 20 of them, eight mm -hmm. bucks, I'll go for you go for We get 10 candles a piece. Those 10 candles will last you a good while. There you go. Absolutely. Teamwork makes the dream work. And also, um, last week we did not do a keyword of the week. As we said, we were going to, um, we were skipping that week because we did our little rerun. So the week before that, the keyword was dreams. And we had a couple people email us for the keyword. Um, so the winner for, I did the little Trying spinny. Oh yeah, I did the little spinny wheel. And um, so um, Charisse or Carice, C-A-R-I-S-S-E. Congratulations, you are the winner of a tea time mug. So I will be following up with you by email to get the address that you would like it sent to. And if you would like, we would love if you wanna post a picture on our Facebook page with you in the mug or just the mug and some sort of background where you are as far as like a forest or something pretty like a backdrop. Um, but this week's keyword is going to be thrifting or thrift, and you can email that keyword to teatimemc at gmail.com, and that's T-H-Y-M-E, like the herb, not the not telling time, and, um, and then we will spin next time for a winner. And just keep in mind, anybody who does sew or craft... Um, and if you don't, a lot of times they'll be willing to show you or willing to do something for a very inexpensive price. Absolutely. Because I, I know that's a big thing with a lot of people are their robes, the stole, the stoles, all the accoutrements that go with it. I know it can be expensive. Um, mm -hmm. my robe is 20 years old now. Um, yeah. I'm not parting with it. I've, I've already. No. No, no, I should die with that thing. Well, my robe um, got used a lot by the Carlian tradition when I got my first degree because it, it was such a nice big, because I'm big, um, and it has, you know, the sleeves that touch the ground. Um, when I wore it to the illustration at the Gray Elephant, a lot of the members who are no longer with us anymore that are in the Summerland wore it. So it's very special to me. But if you find someone who does so, such as myself, or there's a lot that do, um, you know, you can make a deal. And it doesn't have to be a money. It can be a barter deal. Exactly. Um, and I just, I caution everybody about um, buying anything. It's, you know, if you can make it, it's so much better. If you can't, there are classes all over. And a lot of us old women, oh, yeah. um, when I teach my physical class uh, with my students, we do have arts, what they call arts and crafts. We make our own stuff because not only is it cheaper, it's so much fun. We get so silly making it, but it's also you're putting all that energy in it that's your own. So yeah. find your creative. Everybody's got a little creativity in them. You know, find out what you can do. Um, Absolutely. And someone will help you. I mean, it's, it's never like anybody go, oh, you're going to make that? Oh, my God. Uh, no. Usually it's like, oh, my God, you're going to make that. Yeah, it's definitely a plus. Um, but we could too. go on and on. Yeah, absolutely. 
that's a de that's definitely another idea and we've talked about that before if you incorporate the kids and do the crafting with the kids you can make all sorts of things for you know altars and all sorts of things for tools um, and if you are someone that's sewing, you can do little, like you said, little robes and things like that. There's, There's so also much you can do, but it, again, it's, you've got to think about, you got to think outside that box, you know, yeah. get out of that box, put your witchy hat on in your head, flip your switch, go into the store and see what you see. Exactly. Exactly. And I absolutely enjoyed the show. We could go on so much, but that's just some basic things we wanted to cover. We both love thrifting. Um, and I think, you know, with everything going on and it becoming more popular, we wanted to definitely cover. Um, yeah, that's that. a thing now. People really, it used to be if you got something at the thrift store and you wore it, people were like, oh, really? Yeah. And now they're like, oh, my God, that is so cool. Where'd you get it? And you say, oh, I went thrifting. And they're like, where? Because exactly. they want to go. You know, so go out there, have some fun. And for your ritual robes or whatever you're going to, your witch you wear, it is coming up soon. Now's the time to start looking for black skirts, yes. black dresses, whatever your holiday Halloween is, uh, especially if you have children, now you're going to want to start getting those little things in to make their costumes and all that good stuff. So now's the time to when you really want to start looking at that and start seeing the exactly. Costumes. And again, a lot of your thrift stores have new costumes cheaper than you can buy at the Halloween spirit. Yep. Um, I don't recommend spending, you know, $50 on a, on a cloak. Exactly. I almost fell out on that one. And we'll definitely get, um, I think we do have some things planned for Samhain, little tips and tricks for things like that once we get closer. So that's going to be fun. But again, the keyword is thrift. We'll just go with thrift instead of thrifting. Thrift. Either one, I'll get it for you though. Yeah, either one. We won't be picky. And again, that's tea time MC at gmail.com t-e-a-t-h-y-m-e-m-c at gmail.com and please feel free to email or message our facebook page with any questions or ideas or topics that you want us to cover we would love 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 to hear from you and we're going to do a cooking session because i've decided we're going to try and get in that kitchen a little bit and get a little bit of this out um if you want something particular that you want us to see to do like if you want us to do a craft or something like that or show us how to do this please let us know because that's not a problem we can show you how to do stuff and we can walk you step by step um, but again if you have a craft that you have done if you've made something really cool or you got a steal at a thrift store put it on our Facebook page so we can see it and share it with everybody else. Cause when you get those good buys, they are awesome. And, and you just like to show them off. So if you want to show them off, get on our page and, and give us a picture of it and just show us, you know, just give us thrifty finds. Show us your thrifty finds. <laughs> show us what that witchy stuff that you got. Your thrifty, your thrifty witchy stuff. Thank you so much again for such a great show, and we are so excited. Thank you for your support, as always. We love you all so, so much. And don't forget to go to our YouTube channel, Tea Time with Mother and Crone. Like and subscribe and click on the little bell so that you know when we're recording.